let's continue our fun adventure with multi-component equilibrium. And I just want to remind you that while our focus right now is on how uh, multi-components mixtures may be modeled with respect to uh, their saturation temperature, pressure, and composition, uh, we could also ask other questions of uh, mixtures, such as what are their density or what is their viscosity. And uh, how we model those, we'll be talking about soon because it's uh, encompassed with many of the same models we use here. So for phase equilibrium in uh, a multi-component system, we still have fugacity equals fugacity, but we need to put a little tweak on it to make it match with the multiple things that are in our system. So it's not merely fugacity of the vapor equals fugacity of the liquid, it's fugacity of subcomponent I in the vapor equals the fugacity of that same component in the liquid. And that is the thing that is true at equilibrium. And how we solve this depends on how we choose to model both the vapor and the liquid. Let's talk about the vapor first. We might want to describe the vapor as an ideal gas, uh, especially if we are at low to moderate, so around atmospheric pressure. And I know that sounds funny because we were like, wait a minute, you know, nothing is an ideal gas. We just did this whole equation of state thing. But it turns out uh, the big assumption in ideal gas is about interactions. And the interactions are not usually on the vapor side of this equation. They're usually over on the liquid side. So we can quite often get away very well with assuming ideal gas. And that means we assume that the fugacity of the vapor is yi times p, which you'll recognize from Raoult's law. So in Raoult's law, what we were doing all along was assuming ideal gas. And really, once we're around atmospheric pressure, that doesn't introduce too much uh, badness. It really doesn't. It doesn't uh, it's not where most of the deviation from ideal behavior is, in fact. Most of that's over on the liquid side, so we're going to get to that one uh, now. So, on the liquid side, we have a couple of assumptions that we could make. We might have an ideal solution. Ideal solution means that the molecules in the mixture uh, encounter each other and interact with each other the same way as they interact with themselves. So. Um, we don't have A and B much more attracted to each other than they are to A to A, B to B. That's an ideal solution case. So that works for very similar chemicals. So if you have a couple of hydrocarbons mixed together, for example, that will tend to be an ideal solution. So if you have an ideal solution at low to moderate pressure, uh, you can then assume that the fugacity of the liquid is equal to xi times pi sat. And you will recognize this as the other half of Raoult's law. So what you're assuming when you write Raoult's law is you're assuming that the vapor side is well described by ideal gas and the liquid side is well described by ideal solution. So sometimes this is true and sometimes that's all the complexity we need. If you have something that has uh, unequal interactions that is what we'd call more of a real solution, not an ideal solution, we have an approach uh, that will capture that. Uh, it's still, at that still low to moderate pressure, um, we use a correction called the activity coefficient. So that's the gamma. So gamma i x i p i set. And we're not going to talk too much about activity just yet. Uh, that's coming up really soon. But I just want you to know that we're going to have an approach to describe non-ideal solutions. And again, uh, most of the time, the weird is on the liquid side, not on the vapor side. So if you need to model a non-ideal gas vapor mixture, uh, you uh, can turn to something like Hysis and Aspen uh, and ask them to apply a model on your behalf. Um, or you can read more in depth in your book about some of the equations you might use to do that. Uh, but when we are calculating by hand, we're pretty much going to assume uh, ideal gas because it works pretty well in this case. Talking about our actual problem that we are solving today. And I've broken this problem into two pieces. One 
is uh, more important for us to do together because it's a little more complicated and the other we will either do in class or we may do in lab depending on uh, when we have time for it. So last time you generated a PXY diagram. So that is at a given temperature, what are the pressures and what are the vapor compositions? Now that's easier to calculate, but a more common situation is we are under constant pressure, right? I'm under atmospheric pressure right now. Uh, so I would want to apply Reynolds law uh, or uh, what have you, but let's assume right now we're, we're still okay applying Reynolds law to find the boiling temperature of a mixture that I have here. So this is something that uh, comes up quite frequently. I have a mixture. I want to know when it's going to boil, not when, what temperature it's going to boil. I want to know what the vapor composition will be. So let's imagine uh, we were a whiskey distillery, such as is one of the customers for our senior design projects this year. And they have a mixture of ethanol and water, and it is currently in the liquid phase. And the mole fraction of ethanol is around 0.85. So 15% water on a molar basis, 85% ethanol on a molar basis. And they're under atmospheric pressure because they're not doing anything special with the pressure. If they were to bring this to a boil, what would the vapor composition be? And at what temperature would that boiling happen? So that is my question for you. And right now we are going to assume this is well described as an ideal solution and an ideal gas. And we will be questioning that assumption later. So we're going to pull out Relt's law. We're assuming that that is okay. And we're going to write out Relt's law for ethanol. We're going to write it again for water. Uh, we are going to remember that the sum of the vapor phase mole fractions is 1. Uh, we'll go off to Appendix E and retrieve the Antoine equation for both ethanol and water and use that uh, to get our PSATs. And then we'll have to solve this. And a hint for you as you're solving this, again, you're going to want to get out a spreadsheet uh, because, or set things up so there's variables in your calculator, because you're going to need to iterate to solve this. There isn't an easy way to write this uh, set series of equations in terms of temperature equals something. So you're going to have to, well, what I like to say, guess and check works very well. Um, goal seek can also work for this. So let's set it up and go. The second part of today's problem for today, either uh, for us to solve today or for us to solve in the lab coming up sometime in the, in the future, is to compare the results we got for our Reynolds law based TXY calculation for ethanol water with a more sophisticated model. And how we're going to run that sophisticated model initially is we're going to use our friend uh, Hysis and Aspen properties. So I want you to go dive in in one of the computer labs, open up um, Aspen properties, or if you prefer, you can actually construct this as a stream in Hysis or you could try both. Uh, I want you to select a property package, and I want you to see what happens for this mixture. Um, you should know that your uh, selection of property package will result in different answers. So make sure you note down what you get in terms of the vapor mole fraction, in terms of the temperature, and we'll have a little discussion about what's likely to be true. Fortunately, the ethanol water system is a very well-studied one, so you should be able to look up actual data for this and compare. 